Значит, потом ты бери рыбу. I neglected to order a gown for your wedding. I'm trying to make one of hers, too. I think a sister should favor her brother's wedding with her best appearance, don't you? I don't think T.C. will like this, Vance. You know he's been particular about keeping her room, same as before she died. Mother had everything. Calling cards for a woman whose next-door neighbor was miles off. Jewels for a woman who never looked at herself in the mirror. Sunshades for a woman who never left this room. You understood her. I never did. No, you never did. <laughs> I'm only surprised he hasn't hung a sign on this. The wifely property of T.C. Jeffords. And you're T.C.'s son, and he despises anything he can beat. I never let him beat me. Why do you always let him get the best of you? Isn't it written in the scripture? Honor thy father. Always laughing at me inside you, aren't you, Clay? Not always. Why do you suppose T.C. is coming back from San Francisco? Why, for my wedding, of course. Ah. <laughs> I know, T.C. wouldn't walk across the street to my wedding. And why is he coming back? I think he needs money. T.C.? Oh, you must be moon hit. Why, he's one of the richest men in the territory in the whole country. Cattle rich, land rich. I make it he's money poor right now. I make it that's why his head's got he taking tally. That's why he's spreading these I.O.U.'s. Oh, they're easy to spread. Less easy to pay off. Fit you. Father? Son, you make father sound just like son of a she fox. <laughs> Daughter, son, meet Reynolds here. Reynolds from Old Anaheim's Bank in San Francisco. Reynolds, meet my household. Scratch me six lumbar vertebrae. This here is Scotty Hislop. Scotty keeps my accounts. The man who made all those bear raids on the Huron Railroad stock and then took to Swindon on the sound theory that the things folks want most in life is to get something for nothing. <laughs> oh, souvenir. Time met up with a party of Osages and got an iron with six lumbar vertebrae. Scar vexes me now and then and takes kind of discretion. This be El Tigre, the tiger. My ranch boss. Senor. <laughs> El Tigre won victory after victory, for his love of his people was known to his people. And then he hung a man. And it was justly. He was so taken with the dance on the air, he'd begun hanging his people. <laughs> and unjustly. His people took just so many hangings. You tell all Anaheim I got only the best working the Furies for me. Marcel, my cook there, once dished up a mess to pull you and give him a blue ribbon for her. And when I gifted my deceased wife with a portrait of myself, I... Pretty good, eh? <laughs> Chiquita! The dust on me. See, si, Patron, but I did not expect you until tomorrow. Cook and roast up a fine mess for an hour from now. Oh, Vamos, the rest of you. I got a hanging to be with my kid. Vamos! Vamos! DC, you talk too much. So I do and so I will, till I meet up, we'll talk better than mine. Where is it? Where's what? The necklace you said you'd bring back. Clay, you got a mess of good manners. You ought to feed your sister some. Well, uh, here's what you've been pesking me about. Pearls. Fit for dull, dove-faced little women. I told you, anything but pearls. <laughs> you didn't dare come back without it, did you? I bet down with the rattlesnake first. Oh. <sighs> 
like a daughter? So did I. You match her earrings. Well, I'll go up to her room now. For your bride. My deepest gratitude, Father. An hour in the room whenever he comes back to the Furies. An hour whenever he leaves. And yet when she was dying and sent for him, he wouldn't come. He couldn't stand to see anything that belonged to him slip away from him. I like being T.C.'s daughter. Yes, Princess. Heiress apparent to the Furies. Good water and grays here. Anaheim picked himself a smart appraiser. This is the Darrow Strip, best part of the Furies. Darrow's son, he has come back to the town. I thought I'd seen him the last piece of Darrow Hyde. If you permit, Patron, leave this piece to me, eh? I permit. Come on. What's that? Sounds like a calf born. Where do you make it? There, down the drawer. Be a lesson to him, not to get himself stuck in the mud. He didn't get stuck, he's been stuck. It's a squatter's trick. They mire a calf and then come for him later. No, no. It'll choke him, I'll get him. You'll do what? You heard me. Many squatters here on the Furies? Some. The people in the Pueblocitos, the little villages, they matter not. But back in the hills, there are others. You're paid to make sure the squatters don't rob us. Next time, earn your pay. Quite a friendship between you and Miss Vance. Women were created so that man might enjoy his food and sleep, not to give orders. Come on. Take it easy. Try to lend your hand. Did it? Didn't think the old man had it in him, did you? Didn't think I could do it. <laughs> Can <laughs> 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 you crim run a hands? Throw me a rope. <laughs> it must be a calf. It looks like a man, but it can't be. Only a brainless calf would get himself stuck in the mud. TC, you come out of there. You're too old to play at mud pie. <laughs> 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 Aquí no quiero que usen los rifles. No habrá otra oportunidad para matar a viejo. Nunca lo encontraremos con hombres que busquen y pueden ayudar. What are they saying? That never will they have a finer chance to kill the patron. Never will they find him with fewer men to help him. Juanito, este es el día que podemos destruir al viejo. Sí, Juanito. Déjame nada más esta vez. Una pala nada más. Ya les tengo dicho que cuando esté presente la señorita, no quiero que se usen ni las pistolas ni los rifles. ¡Comenden! There is to be no trouble while she is here. No guns. That goes for you, too. You stashed my calf away here! Yeah. I told you before! Senor Jeffords, it has always been our right on the land. The right of we, the Herreras, and those of the Pueblecitos, for as many years back as you have hairs on your head. Stop stealing cattle from the Furies! I told you once, I tell you now. I'll not tell you again. At least he riled you enough so you walked yourself out of the mud. For a fact. I tell you, if the devil riled you enough, you'll walk yourself right out of the fires of hell. I'll give you my word, if I do, daughter, I'll take you right out of there with me. <laughs> <laughs> Rightly speaking, it's no concern of yours, but I think it only fit and proper you'd be a party to it. 
Reynolds here, representing Anaheim's bank, has loaned me $100,000 on the Furies. That's right. Speak when you're spoken to. <laughs> you favor him on Napoleon, eh? It's a fine work. He was a great one. Started from scratch to build himself an empire. Hey, how do you like me? Well, no matter, no matter. About the matter of the cloud on title. The what? The squatters constitute a cloud on the title of the Furies. As a condition of making the loan, the Anaheim Bank will require the removal of the squatters from the premises. Your legal most daughter, it only means the squatters, they gotta be booted off from the Furies, and so we gotta start booting. Oh, no, you don't, not the Herreras. You tell me what the to do? The Lebusita's all right, but the Herreras stay. Mind your tongue, daughter. I want your word on that, TC. That's one thing I want your word on. Can't I never get the best of you? Never? Never. <laughs> oh, you're a she fox. You got the Furies in you, all right? You have my word on the Herreras. Sign the mortgage, it's fit and proper. May I read it first? Sign it. Certainly, Father. I suppose you'll use part of the money to pay off some of your TCs. Why, you muley headed bone ear. Pay off what? What are these TCs which are to be paid off? Well, you see, uh, the folks here about don't get to see much hard money, so I had these got up for him to use for money. My word's behind them, and my word's enough for the folks. Call them TCs. Folks should like them, too, and why not? They give them better paper than they use in Washington. And my motto is amicus humani generis, friend of the human race, which are six more letters of Latin and e pluribus unum. <laughs> and the boot I give them art. Picture of a Lulu of a girl riding a bull. Fine figure, ain't she? How many of these IOUs of yours are still outstanding? How much do you owe? Peddle them out. Peddle them out. Makes a complication. I'd better bring this situation to Mr. Anaheim's attention. Get out. You and Bobtail talk of TCs? If I've inconvenienced you. Get out! Good night, Father. So you, uh... So you'll have to see old Anaheim. That's fine. You trek on back to San Francisco and palaver it out with the old red eye. Of course you understand. I understand. Yeah, duty and honor bound and such. Well, matter of fact, I'll trek back with you. That'll be fine, sir. Matter of fact, I'll take Chiquita along. What? They say travel's improving. Uh, Mrs. Reynolds, your wife, might get a real pleasure out of uh, meeting Chiquita. Uh, might help to improve Chiquita considerable. In view of the small amount outstanding, I... I don't think it'll be necessary to mention the TCs to Mr. Anaheim. Reynolds, it's always a real pleasure to do business with the gentleman. Uh, there'll be a conveyance for you at the railroad at sunup. <laughs> ah, that Clay. <laughs> He's always laughing at us, isn't he? Clay's man, Caroline Wittick. She'd bring him bar double X when her pa dies. Ah, it's lucky for Clay, because I'll give him no part of the Furies. And that takes care of Clay. For a fact. And I gotta admit I'm none too catty at running the Furies myself. Oh, I know I was good at putting it together. Starting from scratch, hooking one piece of land onto another, but this money talk with puny money men. Running the Furies ain't for me. Which takes care of you. Which leaves who to run the Furies? Which leaves me. Can you run it? Wouldn't speak well for me if I couldn't. It's what you've trained me for, isn't it? Only one thing can waddle it up. What's that? The man you take the husband. My husband will be my choice, not yours. Maybe so. Maybe no. See here, here's half the money I got from Anaheim's bank, $50,000. Good sum. It's yours for a dowry if you pick a man I could favor. One I could sit down at the table with and not dislodge my chow. You sound like you'd rather I never married. You won't have it easy finding a man. I've spoiled most of them for you. You'd want a man like me who'd knuckle on it and know, <laughs> least of all you. <laughs> you think you're top man on God's green earth, don't you? You know anyone better? No, but I'll keep looking, and when I find him, I'll marry him, and I won't care if it does put you off your feet.
Burnett. I take that. Who's Burnett? No matter. Nan gets lonely, daughter. I'll ask no more questions. Scratch my six lumbar vertebrae. since we raced here. I always did get here first, didn't I? You always did get here first, didn't you? Juan Herrera, you let me win. You always did, every time. The one time I didn't let you. You scratch blood. <laughs> it's the Fury's brand on you, all right? No, Vance. Not the Fury's. Yours. No difference. No? What is it, Juan? You've been on touch all day. Look. Wherever you see, as far as you can see, it is the Furies. Your father's. He has spaced for thousands of cattle, for hundreds of horses. But has he spaced for a few Herreras? It's his land. He can have on it whoever he wants. If he doesn't want you Herreras on it, that's his say-so. I was afraid that someday you were going to say that. All right, I've said it. I don't take to anyone talking like that about TC. I don't take to it. Even if we did grow up together, even if you are my friend, one I can talk to, one who understands. And I don't take to your going. Till our eyes next meet. Till then. Time. The kiss of a good friend. Don't, heal me out. Mr. Darrow. 
Mr. Jeffords, sir. My honor and pleasure. That's far enough. I'll have no good eating black leg gambler on the Furies, and I'll have no son of a Darrow. Well, talk like that, sir, must be meant as a joke. I'll be pleased to ignore it. Ignore what you like, but drag your belly out of here. You taint the place. Sir, you posted an open invitation to this gathering on every stick of lumber in the country. To protect those present from any further unpleasantness, I'd like to make a deal with you. You stop telling lies about me, and I'll stop telling the truth about you. <laughs> I heard that before. Now get. I killed your father in a fair fight, and I'd be pleased to do as much for you. Mr. Darrow, sir. This is our dance, I believe, sir. they call you? Some call me a good eating black leg gambler. I run the legal tender. Some call me Mr. Darrow and some call me Rip. Rip? Bit you. Like a blade cutting right through. This wasn't our dance, Miss Jeffords. You didn't invite me here. Why did you let on you did? If I had ever seen you, I would have invited you. I'm sure you would have. Modest, aren't you? No. <laughs> You think you're top man on God's green earth, don't you? I'm a gambler. When I'm losing, I cut my bets to the minimum. When I'm winning, I let it ride. Patron, the food is ready. The beans is on, the coffee's boiling. For them that don't like beans, there are 150 various other victuals, so dig to it. I'm not hungry. Nor am I. My rig is outside. How very convenient. You think I'll be cold? Mind if I take the reins? I'd like to know where I'm going. I think I can trust you. No, no, it'll do without that. She's smart enough to see through him. He'll hang himself. That'll be a different twist of the rope for you to enjoy, eh, Take it. <laughs> Nice romantic spot. That depends on who you're with. I know this place. This is part of the Darrow Strip, isn't it? It is. I thought you'd be more comfortable if the surroundings were familiar. Do you always go after what you're after is directly, is this? When you know what you want, why waste time? Speaking of the weather, Miss Jeffords, it is a fine, brisk evening. So it is. That ends 
a polite conversation. Mr. Darrow, sir. May I expect the honor of your call at the Furies on Saturday? I take it you bake a cake. Isn't that the way the courting is done hereabouts? I've never baked a cake before, but I'll bake one. If I were to come courting you, your father would send his army from the Furies. He'd wreck the legal tender and he'd wreck me. You're not a man to be afraid. The odds are too great against me. I've seen so much death, I want to stay alive. Mr. Darrow, sir. I expect the honor of your call on Saturday. Yes or no? You'll be there. I want your word he can come calling Saturday with no trouble from you or your maggots. Which one of them red eyes is snoring? entitled to quiet in his own home. I want your word. If I give you my word, will you give me yarn? On what? Did you give me a chance to show him up for what he is, a dollar grabby blackleg who'd drag his belly from here to Santa Fe for three dollars in gold or in silver? Or in TCs? He's a puny money man who's out to revenge me for the Darrow Strip and who ain't got bone enough to fair fight. He gouged back at me by doing my daughter malice and harm. That's my lookout. I've always worked my own leather. I'll work it now. I want a yes or a no about Saturday. If I got your word, I can show him up? If you can, that's fair. Then you have my word. Bring the man on. Where's the dude? Where's the tin horn gambler? <laughs> I think the icing on the cake, she melted away. I think so. <laughs> well, daughter, appears like your caller ain't gonna show. I wish the most of the day don't propose to waste more. If he calls, I'll be the hand. Fine. But a slow payoff cuts down on the play. Speed up the playoff. All right, Mr. Darrow. Clever of you. Smart as a whip. <laughs> Told you I didn't want the legal tender wrecked. Didn't want to take on the Furies. That's all I need. Word to get back to your father. You've been here. You have brains enough to know that? Cool down. Don't act like a child. I'll have to treat you like that.
No one ever hit me before. Like a filly that never had a rope on her. I waited for you all day. That was your doing. You said you'd be there. No, you said I'd be there. I didn't say a word. Watch me for that, Vance, and don't misinterpret. I baked you a cake. I brought it along. I didn't want it to go to waste. You brought it to shove it in my face. That's just exactly right. Yeah, it's too good for that. <laughs> You're looking at me with eyebrow lifted. If you have a question to ask me, ask me. Out with it. If you have something to tell me, tell me. Out with it. I was so sure of myself. I was so sure I could handle him or anyone. And now I... I don't know. You have love for this man, huh? This, uh... Rip Darrow? Some weeks I think I know him well. Some weeks I'm sure I don't know him at all. Sometimes I think T.C. is right. That he's a money man. That money means more to him. Maybe... Maybe in his time he has been hungry. To a hungry man, money is always important. I don't think I like being in love. It puts a bit in my mouth. You're in love with me. Since you had your first pony. Tell me, Juan. Do you like being in love? It has been with me for so long that whether I like it or not, without it, I would be a lost man. bottom of the deck. Watch me. Sometimes I think those are the only women that it's in you to love. Why not? They're new and they're smooth to touch. They're exciting. And they're honest. When they're against you, they don't make you think they're for you. When they're for you, they bring you money. Too bad they've got two heads. When they're for you, they bring you money. I could bring a man money. Lots of it. Fifty thousand dollars. You've mentioned it often enough. It's a royal dowry. It is. Rip, do you ever mean to ask me in marriage? I do my own proposing. Remember that. Ask me again to call on you at the Furies. If I ever get you there, I'll never let you go. Ask me. Mr. Darrow, sir. May I expect the honor of your call at the Furies tomorrow? Yes. But there's never a word of love from you. Except for women like that. They're honest. But they're like flesh and blood. Welcome to the Fury, sir. I see the retainers. Where's the king? In his counting house, waiting. Miss Jeffords? Mr. Darrow, sir. If he's smiling, be smart. If he's not smiling, be smarter.
believe you gentlemen have met. Mr. Jeffords, sir, my honor and pleasure. If I hold out my hand this time, will you shake it or will you shoot it off? Been reading me a book on Napoleon's writings. He says the only use of gals is to marry him off in advantageous lines. That's what he writ. <laughs> Scotty tells me you've been buying some cattle from the Furies for cash. I've gone in for a little cattle brokerage and some friendly banking. Mr. Darrow, I hate a man that's mealy mouth, so he'll come smack God with it. Bye. You love my daughter? Yes. She love you? She thinks she does. She's blind. I aim to make her see. I have her word I can show you up for the puny money loving red eye you be. Ah. I have your word. Well, you know what this is. Fifty thousand dollars. College. My daughter's dowry if she picks a man that's fit for her, and you, sir, ain't fit. You have the stump. My daughter takes you to husband, I'll cut her off without a two-cent piece. You'll get her as she stands, not a whit more. But if you walk out of here now and let my daughter be, you can keep the whole bundle and worth it to me. Now take her and get her, take the money and get, but get. I knew the cash had bait him. I'll take the money. But you really didn't have to do it. I never told your daughter I'd marry her. You did. And I had no intention of doing so. You did. I'd be foolhardy to call a Jeffords a liar. When you said you'd come calling. Vance, I told you I'd do my own proposing. And I warned you not to misinterpret me. Consult your father here on misinterpretation. He's an expert. I believe, sir, you won the Darrow Strip in court on a theory of misinterpretation. I told you, daughter, he was using you to gouge back at me for the Darrow Strip. And you're not ready to marry. Not to me or anyone else, because you're married already to the Furies. You don't want a husband. You'd just like to have a man handy at the Furies. If you don't want word of this to get around, don't try to wreck the legal tender. My thanks for my invitation to the Furies. I've enjoyed my call. Miss Jeffords? Mr. Jeffords, sir? Casey, we've been taken like a couple of suckling pigs. <laughs> he hit me, and no one else ever did before. And he made me cry. No one else ever did before. Welcome home. I'll unpack my bags and stay a while. I like a nice simple contract. The Darrow Bank. The Darrow Bank is to conduct all business in this territory for the Anaheim Bank. Except for any business at the Furies. I'm not exactly welcome there. You'll handle our business at the Furies too. Frankly, our bank wouldn't be signing with you and you wouldn't be buying cattle for Bailey Brothers if you hadn't swindled old TC. Swindled is a harsh word, Mr. Anaheim. Harsh or not, the story we had had a certain appeal from my father. He likes anybody who can outfox old TC. Is the confirmation in El Paso? I told you they'd weaken. <laughs> You're right again. I mean, you've taken the business like a fur trader to sin. I mean, you... Oh, it... stop buttering up to me, Scotty. What's that you're trying to hide? Oh. Oh, T.C., have a heart. You're spending it faster than I can make it. Another six months away and he'll have the entire nation knee-deep in T.C.'s. Turn up another batch, Scotty. Senor Bailey. Welcome once again, Mr. Bailey. Senor Anaheim, Junior. 
Miss Jeffords, may I present Mr. Anaheim? Welcome to the Fury, sir. I'd conceived an image of you, Miss Jeffers, but it pales beside the actuality. You have a way with a compliment. Mr. Darrow. I believe you know Mr. Darrow. His bank is our new agent in this territory. Congratulations, Mr. Bailey. Mr. Darrow has the smell of a successful businessman. <laughs> I'm sure you know the luck I wish you. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Jeffords. What about the renewal of our loan? Mr. Anaheim Sr. isn't sure he'll renew his loan on the Furies. Why not? Squatters. Oh, so that's still rubbing them, the cloud on title. If you would permit me to drive the Herreras out... No! Mr. Darrow, how would I go about persuading this son of a banker to change his father's mind? Your most persuasive should be persuasive enough. Think so? Chiquita, food and drink for our guests. I'll join you gentlemen in a moment. Mr. Darrow, Scotty has a word for you. Burn out the plebiscitas, get rid of them any way you can, but not the Herreras. I'll handle them in my own way. Is that satisfactory, Mr. Darrow? Burn them out. Kill them off. Simple TC way. Scotty, your word for Mr. Darrow. Any business you have with the Furies, send for me and we'll conduct it at your office. But don't ever set foot on the Furies again. Is that clear? Perfectly, Miss Jeffords. Let me look at you in your new suit. Still as handsome as ever, aren't you? Burn them out! <laughs> I'm asking you to leave the Furies once and for all. Is that why you honor us? I've TC's word you won't be touched. You look like TC, standing there, ordering us off our land. Gracias. <laughs> she doesn't like me any better than TC likes you. It is so. It is so, gracias. You're cold as a blue norther. What are you so galled about? And TC's been away and I sent for you and you didn't show up. Why not? Because I chose not to. That's blunt enough. I have no stomach for the way you live. That's too bad. Anything else? Yes. You cannot blot out the fire within you with this other man. No more than the pueblecitos can blot out a tigre's fire. You're talking about rip. I'm over that. Oh, are you? Always pulling the bit on me, always telling the truth. Warn the saint. Well, now I'm Gog. Go on, dish of the bread, let's break it and let me get out of here. All right, never mind looking for it. It happens I brought some along. It's 
stay one, I need you. There's no one else to pull the bit on me when I'm wrong. Till our eyes next meet. Till then. present my daughter Vance. Daughter, I'd like you to meet an old and dear friend of mine, Mrs. Florence Burnett. Delighted, I'm sure. My dear, <laughs> you look so wonderfully healthy. I told you, didn't I? She's one in the nation. Hey, Scotty, LT, let's get this gear stashed. Mrs., my husband passed on some time ago. My dear, I hope I shan't be too much bother. You won't be. No bother at all. We have guests coming all the time. <laughs> Come on, Flo, I want to show you the house. <laughs> it, it was her idea, senora, not mine. I born out the Pueblositas, they return. It will always be so until the Herreras are driven from the Furies. I understand, Tigre. Good evening. My dear, do come in. Do sit down, please. I'm pleased the Tiger entertained you during T.C.'s visit to his wife's room. Of course, I knew El Tigre by repute. At one time, his name was quite a worry to Washington. <laughs> Senora Burnett, I hope your stay here will be long and memorable. Thank you, El Tigre. I'm sure it will be. Burnett. Oh, yes, of course. I, I knew I'd seen that name often. Signed as endorsement on the backs of checks made out by Temple to cash? Well, T.C. is so loose and free and easy with his money. <laughs> does it make much difference, my dear, as long as he gets his money's worth? But does he? Oh, that's what I'd like to see. I want you two to take a shine to each other. <laughs> Why, Temple, I feel as though we were old friends already. Ah, that is fine. Daughter, hadn't been for Flo, I'd still been shining the seat of my breeches in Washington. Oh, now, Temple. Yeah, Temple. It's a, go on, tell her. Uh, really? Go yeah. on and tell her. Just that I'd been acquainted with the president, so that when it was necessary for the Temple... The president? Talk, yeah. <laughs> Flo fixed a soiree, plunked him right down by me, cut out all the red tape. You can talk to him. <laughs> He's no nine o'clock dude. The range rights acquired from the government are valuable. You've done the Furies a service. You have a fine knowledge of the ways of politics. You can hoot and holler that. <laughs> What's that? Uh, my favorite, cognac and orange juice. Try it, my dear. No, thank you. The oranges will be piling up with a crate, a telegraph bailey in San Francisco. Any libation any of my folks want, that's what my folks oh, is going to get. Temple, how wonderfully oh. thoughtful of you. <laughs> I'm tired. I think I'll turn in. Good night. Good night. Good night, my dear. I'm afraid this house isn't like the houses you're used to. I only hope you'll be comfortable. <laughs> My dear, it seems like home already. <laughs> oh, scratch my six lumbar vertebrae. Ah, <laughs> 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 Say, Flo, did I ever tell you how I got this? Remember, I met up with a party of Osages. Yes, Temple, I know you told me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, feels good. That's it, Pop. All right, son. Here, your payment. If it makes any difference, Miss Vance, you gave me TCs for the last loan. The boss told me this time to to make sure and got the cash. You'll take these TCs. But the boss, he says he was most particular. He... Yes, Miss Vance. Yes, ma'am. Pop, you must be getting feeble. She rolled you right down. Any other remarks, son? No, Pop. Come along. Yes, Pop.
The last transaction with Bailey showed about seven and one-third percent profit. Not about seven and a third, exactly. I mean, you do a perfect job of calculating. I mean, it... My dear, do come in. Scott has been making a wonderfully brave attempt to show me the way a ranch is run, but to no avail. I don't see how you do manage all this. And as for blaming you... What blame? For the squatter's return to the Furies. I told Temple that's no fit work for a lady, earnings and the like. I told him you're not to be blamed one bit for your failure. Thanks. My dear, I had a wonderful notion. I had a notion you'd have a wonderful notion. To aid you. I thought I'd write... I thought I'd have Temple write to Mr. Bailey to send an experienced manager to take the burden from you. Why? My dear, it's a sacrilege that so lovely a creature as you has been kept at the Furies, that you haven't been granted your opportunity to make the grand tour of Europe, Paris, Vienna, Budapest... I like Milan. it here just fine. You're such a brave creature. And believe me, I do understand. It's more than I do. I, too, have had my full portion of unfortunate romance. So I know exactly the wisest way is to forget Rip Darrow and the way you've been tormented. The wisest way is to take a long trip. Ah, oh, that's what I like to see. You two heading away together. <laughs> Come on, Flo, this will be fit to watch. Marty Yeager's breaking in a big coyote. <laughs> yes, Temple. It'll be all right, my dear. You'll see. The bay's got an iron mouth. <laughs> Father. Yes, daughter? Nothing. I may have to write for her. She has been getting moody the past few weeks. May have a change for her. Ah, Temple, you're so understanding. I'm sorry about showing the books, Miss Vance, but... She and I got to talking. First thing I know, the safe was open, the book's out. I mean... I know just what you mean. It was in the merry month of May When I started for... I just don't know how to fight her. It's like hitting the wind that freezes me. I always thought I'd enjoy a thing you broke to hold her. But I don't enjoy it. Not a whip. Turn to her. No. No. Now look at her back. You're not fighting Bailey or the Anaheim Bank. And you're not up against a wind. You're fighting a woman, that's it. <laughs> well, get and go. Where'd you latch onto that? <laughs> I thought only a hear about Radahan knew about that. I'll tell you a secret, sir. I heard it for the first time today. I heard it and I learned it. I was in hopes it would please you, sir. <laughs> All right. It was when I embraced her in my arms. I thought she had 10,000 charms. Her caress was soft and her kisses sweet. Said we'll get married next time we meet. Oh, curse your gold and your silver too. God pity the girl that don't prove true. I'll travel west where the bullets fly. And I'll stay on the trail till the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? I come out here and I'm restless. It's the Darrow Strip, isn't it? Or is it because we rode here? You and I, that night we met. Take your choice. Either way, it shows you have a haunted streak. That's good to know. What are you doing here? I ride out here whenever I'm restless, too. That was honest? That's a dainty little derringer. May I see it? Real dainty. 
don't return here, Mr. Darrow. I'll kill you if you do. Vance? Mr. Darrow? You're really on the prod. Like the cattle, all set to stampede. All set. You'd like me to take you in my arms, wouldn't you? Sleep well. What are you up to in here? Waiting for a chance to see you, to talk to you alone. All right. Sure of an acting woman in this past month. Flo's a friend of mine. I hadn't mentioned Flo. And a good friend of yours, too, if you'd only know it. Fine, fine. I'll light the candles on her birthday. What is it she gives you, T.C.? All your life you've had a craving to find a woman and lady in the same body. That's it, isn't it? Elegance and refinement. You found the lady in my mother, but she wasn't woman enough for you, was she? That's enough of that kind it's of talk, It's more than Vance. enough. What's come over you, backbiting guests under your own roof? My roof? Stop talking such a I don't know whose roof it'll turn out to be. We've no cash. People are beginning to mistrust the TCs. And old Anaheim sitting in his bank ready to knife us. Can't talk like that in her room. You got a gap dip dude out here, not in there, it ain't fitting. Go ahead, break yourself, but don't break the Furies with you. The Furies is mine. I hooked it together and I'll crack it apart if it so pleases me. What are you laughing at? You. It's been so long since you were mad enough to bellow, I thought you were getting puny. Me? Puny? <laughs> yeah, I don't think a good bellow ain't real pleasurable. Daughter, when you get an idea, you stampede like a herd. I told you once, the Furies is yours, to use and boss with me in my lifetime, and it's all yours after that. The whole shebang. That is my word to you. Have I ever broken... How long will she stay? When we hang the latch string out at the Furies, we put no time limit on it, do we? No. Now, I'll tell you this. She's fixing to visit San Francisco before much longer. Good. I'll help her pack. Temple. I've been waiting, Temple. I, 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 I really forgot. You don't mean to ride in this rain. Oh, my dear. I'm not one who'll melt away. Are you so sure? What are you doing in her room? My dear, do come in. It was so good of you to have Chiquita prepare me this tea. I always did say hot tea was a woman's best ally against the rain. I told Chiquita to bring her to your room, not here. Now I shall miss Chiquita and you and all the Furies. You what? I leave for San Francisco next week. I don't know when I've enjoyed a stay more, my dear. I do wish I could express how grateful I am to you. My dear, don't try. I hope you'll visit the Furies again. Sometime. Oh, then your father hasn't told you. Told me what? Why, he's journeying to San Francisco with me. We're to be married there. While we're away, this room will be done over completely. And then I think the room will suit me just perfectly. Why? I don't understand. Why do you marry him? An extraordinary question. The answer, my dear, is somewhat more simple. A woman of my age can get very lonely, and I find T.C. companionable. That's drivel. You want his money and you know it. Of course, that too. I once married for love. The marriage failed for the lack of money. Money makes life soothing. I mean to have it. And if some term me an adventurous, why, I suppose that's what I am. No, a most extraordinary thing your father did. He gave me $50,000 outright and then proposed to me for the first time. It's yours. Why do you marry him? Perhaps for love of the man or perhaps for love of the Furies. You told her. 
She has. I said it was a thing I'd tell her myself. Temple, I knew how difficult it would be for you. It was my wish to ease it for you, to help you, to smooth it. Daughter, I wanted Flo to be a friend to you. She yanked the blinkers off of me and made me see what an ordinary old moss horn I was to. To work you so very hard, my dear, to compel such self-sacrifice of you. So it's all been wonderfully arranged. Mr. Bailey has a competent man on his way here now to take the load of running the Furies from you. Oh, it's fitting. He'll evict the squatters, as Mr. Anaheim insists. All of the squatters, including the Herreros. No. Have your word they're not to be touched. My dear, the entire territory will envy you because you're to make the wonderful grand tour of Europe. Ah, I envy you myself. To see all that for the first time. And my dear, please remember, there will always be room for you at the Furies. There will always be a room for the wolf at him. will be forever disfigured, a permanent partial paralysis. But uh, considering that the wound was deep and bordered on the vein, I'd say that I did a very decent job. Good night, Doctor. Yeah, interesting night, at any rate. Well, I promise. Trail the rough way up there. Mr. Jeffers, she's your own flesh and blood. She's a canker to be cut out.
Oh. The old witch nailed me. Now you live. Get that sack. Cover me. You're afraid, huh? There's no need for fear. We have waited a long time for this day. Still away, short. Only one thing for it. Get close. Come on. I'm moving up. Come on. Come on. Any closer than we'd all be pigeons. Those Herrera's can hit a pigeon in the ad 300 yards. to get killed? No, but it's my profession. The crawling old ghoul creeps closer. Come, my old. Come, my horror. Oh. <laughs> Little more, and I send you to the flames. You're afraid, yes. Not for yourself, but for him. You're afraid that he will be killed, huh? The old bull is pouring his way into the trap. Come, my old one. Come, my door. Closer. Mama, that is enough. We will yield to the old one. We will go away from the furies. My friend wants it that way. I am the eldest. Since when has the word of the elders not been the word for all, huh? Since when? Vamos, friends. Quiero hablar con tu papá. defeat, but we will surrender if you give me your word that we can all go free in safety. It's a lie, a trap. It means to draw us in for the kill. A trap? Why should they lie? They ain't like you. <laughs> You've been trespassing the Furies long enough. Go on, good riddance to you. We have your word? Yes, yes, I said. It is agreed. Come up. Come out now, my brave men.
Get their guns. Cut that bay out and bring them to me. Get off the Furies and stay off the Furies forever. You can take a horse apiece and not one whit more. This bay here, what outfit does it belong to? It belongs to me. You know that. The bay has a Furies mark. It was stolen six months ago. Dan on the air. Tigre, you still got a hankering to see a man hang? If this thief would hang, never again would a squatter dare appear on the Furies. It's true, but I've given my word. For trespassing, not for stealing horses and cattle. It is all right on the land to take a horse, a cow, a calf, enough to live on, and no more. It has always been the right of the Herreras on this land. The thief, he talks of rights. Well, Patron, hang him. He means me to beg. To beg him for your life. All right, I will. Wait. It is true. He means you to beg. It is also true that should you beg, he will hang me anyway. He sits his stallion, stiff with hate. You will not humble yourself. This I ask. Nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venganos al sea tu reino, haga sea tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día, danos de hoy y perdónanos nuestras deudas, así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos de todo mal. Amén. The kiss of a good friend. Till our eyes next meet. Till then. Tears about it to see someone you love hurt, doesn't it? Do you want me to beg? Do you want me on my knees to you for his life? I'd hang him anyway. That's what he said. He did, eh? He always was smart. But you're not. You're old and you're getting foolish and you've made a mistake. It's me you should have hung. Because now I hate you in the way I didn't know a human could hate. Take a good long look at me, T.C. You won't see me again until the day I take your world away from you. Juanito. Oh, Juanita! Juanita!
Heather, honey. Where's Rip? He'll be back most any time. Just get in off the railroad? Yes. We haven't met before. My name's Dallas Hart. I'm new in town, honey. Honey, you wouldn't be new any place. Don't tell me. You're Vance Jeffers. Rip tell you about me? No, but everyone else has. And I can believe what they say. Good night, Dallas. But Rip... I said good night. I never could see what they see in the thin ones. It's not what they see. Been away a long time. And you've marked off the days on your calendar. You're not so calm and collected as you're trying to make out. I'm out to get the Furies for myself. How? TCs. I've been running what Scotty calls a bear raid on the TCs. These past months, I've covered every mile of track on the railroad. I've spread word that they're worthless, that my father will never be able to pay them off. People have been offering me those for 80 cents on the dollar. I expect to buy all I need at five or ten cents on the dollar. You mind? People panic. Just uh, how does this get you the Furies? Right here, black and white, in easy stages. Have I slipped up in any part of it? I'm sure you haven't. It'll work. Fine. There's a certain irony. In what? The key to the plan lies in the Anaheim Bank, getting it to extend T.C.'s mortgage. You're smart. It wouldn't work if Anaheim foreclosed on T.C. Not now. Not till we're ready. I'm the correspondent bank here for Anaheim. But the decision must be made by old man Anaheim himself. You know that? Why did you come to me? Money. Money to buy the TCs. Dowry money, $50,000. I've kept it here for you. It's yours. I'll pay you for the use of it. I hope you know what you're doing. If this works, it'll wreck your father. I'll not let the fury slip away from me, and it certainly will if it's left to him and to her. Not her. Him. T.C. you hate, isn't it, Vance? You've found a new love in your life, haven't you, Vance? You're in love with hate. And work hard at it. Maybe all you need to live by. I hope it'll be enough. Because hate doesn't leave room for anything else in your life. And I speak as one who's hated the same man as you hate now. What's in this deal for me? What do you want? The arrow strip. The sweetest part of the Furies. By every fair right is mine and I mean to have it. Look at it. Just the thought of losing part of the fury and you're ready to claw and scratch. Is it a deal? Does it make sense to you to give up 10% of the furies to save 90%? It's a deal. Good. When do we go to San Francisco to hit Atlanta? The sooner the better. to your room? Are you sure you won't extend the loan? It seems my father's been waiting a long time to get a TC. I'm sorry. You should be. Good night. Yes? What are you doing up so late? I couldn't sleep. Did you see young Anaheim? False alarm. Talks big means little. I'll have to see the old man. Old Anaheim's got to extend the mortgage or we're licked. 
Otherwise, T.C. won't round up the cattle, and rounding up the cattle is a job only T.C. can do. Get the Furies cattle, and then get the Furies. Look, it was your idea. Don't weaken on me now. Well, don't worry. I'll take care of old Anaheim. Oh, mighty confident, aren't you? Sure you can handle any man. Well, look at you. <laughs> You'd like to hit me right now, wouldn't you? I would. Go ahead. Now you'd like to kiss me, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. What's in it for me? Is it worth a Darrow strip to you? Sleep well. Good night, Mrs. Anna. Good night, Good night, Emily. Do convey my thanks to your husband. I'll convey your thanks to my husband. Good night. Mrs. Anaheim, I can't thank you enough. It's been a most interesting evening. I'm so glad. If you'll excuse me, my dear, Miss Jeffords has no escort. I'll take her to her hotel, then I'll stop at the club. I expect I'll be quite late. No, thank you, Mr. Anaheim. I couldn't impose. But Miss Jeffords, I... No, thank you, Mr. Anaheim. Very well. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome. You could have wrapped my husband round your little finger. That's right. Why didn't you? I came here for one purpose, to make sure T.C. got a 90-day extension on his mortgage. I feel somehow if I had permitted Mr. Anaheim to see me home, I wouldn't have achieved that purpose. Why not? In the course of the evening, I realized that you were the one to reckon with. You're a clever one. I don't control the Anaheim Bank, but I do control Mr. Anaheim. And have I reckoned with you? I like a clever woman. I'll help you. Thank you. He's a faithless husband, but he is my husband. Come on, come on. Quit cat and mouse me, yes or no? No. We foreclose the Furies immediately. Good day. T.C. Emily. You reprobate. I was told this meeting wouldn't occur until later in the day. So if I'm somewhat out of breath, you'll forgive an old woman. Old? Get and go. If you was any younger, we'd have to throw you down to get shoes on you. <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting your daughter. Who? Your daughter. You must be mistaken, Emily. I have no daughter, not anymore. Well, the old bear's got his claws sunk in me. What is it you want, T.C.? Ninety days' time. There's been no cattle buyers and no market at all. But now I've got me one. Give me 90 days to round up my cattle, collect and deliver, and I'll have the money to pay you off. 90 days. You have no such deal. Well, I'm a rotten liar, Emily. A lie sticks out of me like a billy goat's whiskers. I've got no deal. Bailey's supposed to have himself a cattle buyer, but with this market, I doubt it. But give me one more chance at Bailey. I think T.C. can have until 10 tomorrow morning, don't you? All right, my dear. And if he gets a buyer, you'll give him his 90 days, won't you? Yes, my dear. Thanks, Emily. How is she? Your daughter? Oh, fine. Only I could find that cattle buyer Bailey whispered about. Only we could float some more TCs. Only I had a buck for every time you said of only. Cold, Scotty. Can't seem to get enough sun or fire to heat me through anymore. I've got five $1,000 bills in my garage bag. 
And they're yours if you want. How so where would you get you the money, Scotty? Where was it when you hired me? Just got you out of jail. What was I in for? Took the next step to being a finance genius. You took out right to swindling. Working at the Furies, I just sort of kept my finger in the pie somewhat. Five thousand's yours if you want. <laughs> ah, Scotty. If you was going to steal, you should have stolen enough to do some good. Thank you kindly. Keep your grudge bag tied. Five thousand would only be a spit in the ocean. Order up some more wood. I'm cold. Still cold? Yeah, I've been cold ever since that dawn I hung him. Ever thought of asking her for the money you need? Scotty! Scotty. I'll get more wood. Supper's here. Flo. Please, Flo. You said please. You never said that to me before, Temple. man that's mealy mouth, so I'll come right out with it. I'm broke, bust, flattered in a poor boy's tortilla. I need the fifty thousand dollars I settled on you and the jewels and, well, anything a dollar can be raised on. What you put away for a rainy day? Rainy? <laughs> it's a cloudburst. That must have been difficult for you to say to me, Temple. Yes, it were. Do you really think I'd come through for you? Oh, son, uh, step outside, will you? I'll give you a holler when I need you. If I gave you the money, you saved yourself with it now. You'd get rid of me. Well, you shouldn't talk so. You'd get rid of me because you can't bear anything ugly. You don't see your face when you look at me, Temple. But I see it. I thought you were hungry, Temple. If you saved yourself now, you'd find another woman. When it wasn't marked. One who didn't drink too much. Quite possibly one who was rich. In any event, you'd get rid of me. From this face, I'd find no one else. I'm bound to be lonely. Money is the only thing that makes loneliness bearable, to some slight degree. So I must refuse you, Temple. I must keep the money I have. And if that isn't supporting of me, I can't help that. No, well, that's real. It's honest. I'm sorry, Temple. Yes, I believe you are. And I'll tell you this. If I ever get any fresh money, I'll come and bring you back to the Furies. I hope you do get money again, Temple. And somehow I think you will. Well, here's hoping. <laughs> here's hoping. Oh, son. Pour out that wine, fill up these glasses here, and catch hold of one yourself. That wouldn't be proper, sir. I said catch hold. We're drinking a toast to a lady. And it's fitting all presents should join in. Come on, wake up. Come on, come on. Bailey's just come through. Come on, come on, wake up. Uh, we got a buyer. Oh, you old jackass. Well, if I'm a jackass, you're my brother. Come on, come on, wake up. Just got an order from Bailey. Uh, just got an order from Bailey. Uh, He's got a buyer for 20,000 head of cattle. A buyer for 20,000 head of cattle. Oh. Enough to pay off every dime to Anaheim. Enough to pay every dime to Anaheim. Ah! 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 Ah
Have you got 20,000 head of cattle? You rake out every last maggot that can walk and crawl. Oh, Cimarrons that ain't seen the light of day for a dozen years. And them up in those rocks that are skinnier than a snake's rump. We round up 20,000 head. Come on, Scotty. We're paying a visit to Anaheim, the old windsucker. Toss me my breeches. Yeah! Yeah! Fell asleep, hungered on his spurs. The patron. <laughs> He's the best I ever worked for. He's the best I ever saw. He's the best I ever heard of. The boys already got up a tune about him. They'll sing about TC in this roundup forever. You heard it? Through mesquite and chaparral, TC cussed and fit. And drugged them cows from out the sloughs until the cowboy spit. Oh, there never was a man like old T.C. when he was in his prime. He drugged them cows from out the sloughs at T.C. roundup time. When I get through, you'll do more and spit. <laughs> Swings his boot and squatters scoot. Ain't no man to fool. His word is law, his whip is raw, for he was born to rule. Oh, there never was a man like old T.C., a giant in his prime. His word is law, his whip is raw, and T.C. round up time. Well, will you look at that. <laughs> the old rogue, neat as a goat, tough as Mother Lucy. Needle horn and an uglier rogue than me. Prancing wild here a dozen years or more. The king of the furies. What's that? I said he was king of the furies. Where's my horse? Here. He used to try to throw that bull. He does.
comes Bailey now. The roundup will be finished tomorrow. TC will be here tomorrow night for his money. He still has no idea who's buying the cattle from him? He said to me, buy all, get and go. I don't know who's buying and I care less. Just let the money be there. <laughs> You've won. By tomorrow night, you'll own the Furies. Yes, I've won. Congratulations. Thanks. You should be happy. Thanks, you've done a good job. You know, I'd be happy to invest part of my fee. In what? In dinner for the three of us. I'm not hungry. Nor am I. They say the night air is freshening to the appetite. My rig is hitched up outside. How very convenient. And what a coincidence. This is a nice romantic spot. That depends on who... No. It's no use, Rip. No use at all. We'll never have what we could have had, what we started out to have. You've changed, so have I, too much. You thought it would be different, didn't you, Vance? You thought that when you'd licked T.C. and finally gotten your revenge, it would be the greatest moment in your life. And if I did? You're wrong. Tomorrow night, you'll face T.C. and you'll wreck him. We're the same kind, you and I. We're both out for what we can get. And we're smart. We'd make a good partnership. Darrow and Jeffords or Jeffords and Darrow? Oh, funny. But we would make a good partnership. And I figured it out. We... We may as well get married. It would be much simpler than drawing up a 20-page partnership agreement. You're wrong again. I'm always wrong with if you. If we marry, it won't be a business arrangement. Ask me to be your husband. If we marry, remember one thing. You'll be my wife. Whenever you're wrong, I'll tell you so. If I'm ever wrong, you just keep your little mouth shut. Mr. Darrow, sir. I hope you can chew what you just bit off. We'll celebrate tonight, Scotty. If I get to go, we'll celebrate tonight. <laughs> Come on, Scotty. Bailey never thought I'd ever sit to on a Dara Bank. The bank happens to be a correspondent of the Anaheim Bank, and my letter... Enough of this legal munch. Let's get it over with. These are the purchases for whom I acted as broker. I've got your signed order for my cattle. When do I get paid? Mr. Bailey, pay him off. One hundred and forty-five thousand six hundred dollars and no cents. I assume the computation agrees with your tally. TCs. Pay in my own TCs. Worthless. Fit to bet a pup down with another more. 140,000. I didn't know I had that much out. That's a heap of money for one man to scatter about. His own legal tender. Little of a girl riding a bull. I knew it was art, but I'll be double dogged. I never thought a girl could really ride a bull. But you did it, Vance. You rode me proper and you throwed me proper and you rode the seasonal rise in beef prices. 
Sell cattle enough now to pay off old Anaheim. Every acre free and clear. Look at her, Bailey. She's smart and she's a beauty and she's full of lick and fire. She's one in a nation. And I tell you, no one could have better but T.C. Jeffords. You're an old rogue bull, T.C. And you'll always prance wild. And so the Furies is in your hands. Man, I suppose that's where she best be. I'm back to scratch. That's when I had my fun, starting from scratch. What's your share in all this? The Darrow Strip. It's mine. You have aged a long time to say that, haven't you? Yeah. I don't think I'll stop aching till I have a son. I'll own the whole Furies. Ha! <laughs> no. By all the twelve sons of Jacob. I got a hundred dollars gold in my pocket. That'll just about see us through the royalest ran of hand this town ever did see. We'll start at the Queen High. The legal tender. What's my doing? We'll start where I say. We'll begin us at the Queen High. No telling where we'll end us. Oh, wait. Uh, we've got mature. Paid in full. T.C. Jeffries. Come on, Bailey. Come on, Scotty. We're going to celebrate. And we're going to start right now. Rip. I know. You want it to be a three-way partnership. Fun again is starting from scratch. Aren't you getting a little old for that? Old? I'm just the right age. Old enough to know better and young enough to forget what I know. Don't think I ain't had me a mace up my sleeve. Scotty's got $5,000 in an island off the California coast named Catalina. You told me about that island. Yeah, but well, I didn't tell you all about it. You mean a certain wiry little filly? Get and go. Where'd you hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, no matter about her, I tell you there's this island there and it's fit for a king. <laughs> now, where's the shot? It's T.C. T.C. is the shot. Hey, look at the shot. Over here. This way. Get Dr. Grieve. He's in the bar. Get him. Phil Herrera witch, huh? Uh, she could hit a pigeon in the eye at 300 yards. <laughs> Don't you go naming my grandson T.C. Too heavy a pack for him to carry. <laughs> You'd have too much to live up to. Because <laughs> there'll never be another like me. <clears throat> Scotty, you'll we'll take him home to the Furies. Put a great stone over it. We'll carve the letters two feet high. T. C. Jeffords. He'll like that. And we'll have his grandson. And we'll name him T. C. just the same. There was a man like all 